On this episode, we do pickups. A little bit on a far from. I'm not gonna lie. Please don't mind the accent. It's rotating. It's a potating, rotating. Well, at least the pickups are working. Isn't that pretty? Mm. Hi everybody, this is uh, Christian from LazyDiffs Academy and this is the advanced map tutorial. So, uh, we are on a sprint. We are on a sprint to make this game playable and uh, we, on the last episode we did the options and we did the shooting. The shooting looks pretty sweet. There's some minor details that you can tweak but we're gonna do that later on. For now I want to focus on something very different. In order to make our gameplay stuff work well, what we need to do is we need to do pickups. So this is something that we're gonna do today. Pickups. So pickups are, we're gonna split the, this thing, this subject into three stages. First is gonna be uh, update pickups. Well, before we update pickups, we need to spawn pickups. We need to update pickups and we need to draw pickups. These kind of like, you know, the, the basic things that every object does. Um, first, before we go dive into those subjects, all of these subjects have their little quirks and challenges that we're gonna discuss in a second. But first, let's think about how to do pickups. Because here's the thing, I was, when, the, when, when I first did pickups, I was also considering maybe reusing some of the existing systems. For example, we already have a system that draws particles. And it has a very sophisticated, you know, animation stuff happening there and behind it, right? So we could like tap into that system and say like a pickup is kind of like a particle that also collides with stuff, right? I was considering that for a second. Another approach would be to make pickups some kind of like an enemy and we could give the pickup maybe some kind of behavior that uh, like a brain that we have with enemies, right? And that would allow us to reuse that system, get more use out of that system, maybe save up some tokens. Uh, in the end, I decided to make pickups its, its own thing, spawn them into its own array and have its own update function that does its own things, mainly because the pickups are kind of behaving in a way that nothing else behaves so far in like the, the the enemies have like the brains but the brains have like this are this programmed path they're going across and the pickups are supposed to be kind of like moving a little bit more freely so that's not really the a, a good analogy and with the particles the particles are kind of like designed to be like this temporary effect on the screen right it's not necessarily something that is designed to be uh uh, staying maybe for, on the screen for a longer time and interacting with the player's location and stuff like that, right? That's not something really that particles are designed to do. So um, let's do particles its, its own system. And maybe that's a bad idea. We're gonna see about that. Now the positive thing is that we already did the play testing. We already know exactly what the pickups are supposed to do. So um, it's gonna be very much, so much easier to set up all those systems. We know exactly where we're going. Good, um, so first before we do anything, let us get the sprites set up. So uh, let us put the sprites into the sprite sheet. And as before, I will provide all of the sprites in a doobly-doo down in the doobly-doo where you can uh, check out the, um, oh, is that good? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, check out the code before and after an episode and um, there's going to be a folder with assets and I will provide individual PNGs with all this stuff. So um, as you maybe saw already, uh, one of the pickups that we have is a cow pickup. And I'm going to see if I can squeeze this in here somehow. Now the problem with the cow pickup, you will immediately see there is a problem with a cow pickup. And that is we are kind of like being a little bit inefficient. A little bit inefficient. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, this is inefficiency. Does this fit in here? It does not. It does not. Oh, I hate this. Well, well let's, let's put it to the side then. I, I, I wanna, this is supposed to be like this um, firm line that we're not supposed to cross. Okay. Let's clean this up a little bit. So one of the pickups is a cow. And the problem is that we already have the same sprites down here. That's not efficient. If we were smart, 
if we were smart, we would use these sprites uh, to make the pickups. There is two problems with that. One problem is that those cows here, those don't cover all of the angles here. There's one cow looking down that we don't have here. And there's one cow looking to the upper left side. And we don't have that here either. Now we could change those cows around. This would be fine. The other problem is that these cows have an outline. And those cows down here do not have an outline. And we could draw the outline live, but that costs a lot of draw operations. So I don't, I'd really like to avoid that. So I'm not sure how to best to solve this. I will just continue with this. Uh, and if we're really struggling, if we really need the sprite space, and there's just no other way, then I'm gonna try to figure out some kind of cool solution to compress this a little bit. One solution would be to just remove those cows and instead um, kind of spawn like an enemy, ground enemy that you cannot interact with. And that's, that's gonna be a cow. And you will place cows on the screen that way. I think that's okay. I think that that's doable, uh, but um, that's not something I will I want to dig into at this point. This is this is like future Christian problem. Uh, so let me fix this up real quick. All right. So these are the cow pickups. Now the other pickup that we want to have is going to be the star pickup. So let me put in the star pickup. Boop. So with the star pickup is something uh, something I'm going to try this time around. I mean, maybe that's a bad idea, but I this is a fairly big sprite. And so I'm going to use this new function that allows us to mirror things in a non-uneven amount of pixels, right? That's something I want to reuse. That's that function I want to reuse to make this, this star pickup work. There's going to be two types of pickups, cows and stars. Um, I, I fi figured out that stars are kind of good um, because the problem with the cows is they're cute and everybody likes them and I like them too. But the problem with the cows is that they are, it's unclear if they're good or not, right? It's just like, it's, it's a cow, right? I don't know. It's, uh, if there's a bunch of cows and you pick them up, it's like, I don't know, did, am I winning, right? It doesn't really communicate visually, uh, the idea that this is this is valuable uh, and so i think whenever it comes to scoring having something that is like golden or a coin or a star or something like this i think that makes more sense okay so these are the pickups right here we uh, squished them in here oh this here's a nice space later um, for now i want to now put those things into the sprite editor All right, so this took some time. I um, I have to say, like when I did this animation first, like when I created all the sprites during my prototyping, this took quite a while to fine tune, especially like this rotation of the cow and making sure that the different cow sprites align against each other when rotating the cow, because mm, rotating stuff is really difficult in pixel art. It's uh, There's just not too many pixels, so moving just thing by one pixel make, um, makes a huge difference. So, and if just like one sprite doesn't perfectly align with another, it can feel very wobbly. This feels wobbly a little bit, uh, but we're gonna have to, we're gonna use a cool technique to kind of like uh, deal with the wobbling. But yeah, for now, this is a bit of a wobbly rotating cow. And the idea was to, to make the sprites, the pickups for the cows a little bit animated. So they feel more like pickups. So they draw more your attention. So it's not just like a, you know, a static cow spread there. So there's some life to it. With the stars, stars are just stars. There's not too much life to them for now. We're gonna keep them like, like this. So yeah, these are the values I'm using uh, for 
uh, for my cow sprite. All right, so now I want to create the animation of the cow. All right, so here you see the the uh, the rotating cow, and you can see it's it's a little bit wobbly, right? It doesn't seem necessarily like it's wobbling around, uh, you know, at one point. But maybe that's going to be fine. We're going to address that in a second. Uh, something I also, also want to do here is I want to also create an animation for the star. And that will just make uh, the code a little bit easier later on when we create the two different types of uh, pickups, depending on whether it's a star or a cow. We're going to see that in a second. For now, let's export this. And I'm going to write down, I'm going to write down somewhere the numbers for the two animations. All right, so back in Cowshmap. So here I want to actually create the simplest possible functions for all of these three steps. Um, the spawn pickup, update pickup, and draw pickup. And then we're gonna go from there, right? So uh, let us thing first create a, an, uh, here's particles, shots, bulls, and so forth. So how about we add parts? Uh, no, not parts, picks. So this is gonna be the pickups, right, the picks. So let us go into the draw function and then draw the picks. Uh, so this is gonna be shortly before the ship. So here, pickups. Uh, and I'm gonna go for P in all picks do. And then it's gonna be uh, just our old fashioned draw OBJ. Just draw OBJ P. Just like that, we're just gonna draw that object to the screen and we're gonna think about all of the other things later. Uh, so this is just the, the pickups for now. Now, let me, like this is gonna be the, uh, the the gameplay stuff, right? And here's, we're gonna do, first we're gonna do uh, do picks and then again for a P in all picks, do and, um, Let's go p dot h plus equal one for now, and then later on we're gonna figure out stuff. Uh, so this is picks, and then directly underneath we're gonna do um, spawn pick. Now this is gonna be a little bit, a little bit more complicated, if you know what I'm saying. So um, we're gonna do a x and y position. We want to spawn the pickup at a certain location, and you know what? This rest stuff we're gonna, the rest we're gonna figure out later on. And this is gonna be just like a simple function where we're gonna go add picks, comma, and then here we're just dump, we're gonna dump a bunch of stuff into the pickup function, so uh, in the pickup uh, array. So uh, we're gonna go x equals px, y equals py. We're gonna go h equals zero. So there's going to be an SX and an SY. Uh, and let's go, let's set them both to zero for now. And we're going to think about that later a little bit. So that's the speed at which this particle is moving. Uh, the, not the particle, the pickup is moving. Uh, we're definitely going to want to do an any. And it's going to be any lib. Uh, for now, we just make sure that all of the pickups are cows. I wrote down the number that's going to be 16. And it's going to be square brackets because that's an array. Anis, animation speed. I thought six was a good animation speed. That's something I derived in the animation editor. And that's gonna be it for now. We're not gonna actually have even a collision box because collision with particles is something I like to solve a little bit differently. We're gonna see that in a second. All right, so this is our, our pickup being spawned. Now we actually have to spawn the pickup. Let me spawn a pickup, pickup right immediately at the beginning of the game. Spawn pick 64. 64, so right in the center of the screen. Let's see how that works. There's the cow. It's there, it's not it's, it's not animating. Oh, because we're not doing the do picks. We're not doing the do picks in the update function. Let's do that real quick. So let's go do enemies do picks, right? And there's the cow, it's rotating. It's rotating. It's a potating rotating. Okay, so that's a cool cow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we have the cow, but it's obviously sitting in place. We don't want pickups to be just sitting in place. I think in some games it might, it might be a good idea, but I think in general, what we want to do is we want the pickups to be moving. So we're gonna go p dot x equals p dot uh, sx uh, plus equals p dot sx plus equals 
p.sx and then p.y equals uh, p.sy. So there's a speed to them. We already set these values all, so that's good. And we just, let's say the, uh, the speed at which it's moving downwards is one. Uh, let's just see how that works. Okay, so you see the cow is, is, is flying down now. It's, it's, let's spawn the cow a little bit higher on the screen. So let's spawn it at zero. There we go, there, is, there goes that boy. So it's cow going down, and that seems like a fine speed to me for now. Okay, good. But uh, I don't like some things about the cow. I don't like how it's just like this cow. Um, it's a visual thing, right? Like, it's just like this weird cow rotating. I don't have a... Like, it's weird to see a cow flying in space, right? So I want to maybe... Uh, I, I had that in um, actually my original... Uh, um, mock-up actually had um, uh, this little thing where the cow was in a bubble. I, I want to add this bubble thing, this kind of bubbly kind of motion, uh, because I think the cow right now, again, it just feels weird that it's just like this cow. And the, if the cow is in a bubble, at least it makes sense why it's hovering in space, right? Uh, maybe there's some kind of force field hovering the cow. So I want to draw the, cow, the, the bubble around the cow. So let me see, where is it? Where are we drawing? Here, when we're drawing the pickups, right? So I want to maybe first draw the bubble and then draw the, the cow on top of it. Um, now, if we want to draw a bubble, it would it, it's not supposed to be just like a circle. It would be nice if it was squishing a little bit because the bubble is kind of like a little bit squishy. It feels squishy. And squishing means we have to draw an oval. And I hate drawing ovals in Pico A. I, it's a new function that was just recently introduced, and I hate one thing about that function, and the fact that it's using the same parameter structure that a rectangle is using. It's the worst structure. I hate that, because you have to specify two points, and none of them are the center of the bubble. Ah! <laughs> it's tremendously bad, and just for that, just for that, I will write a, an own wrapper function that will fix that issue. I call it oval 2. I will just copy it from, from the other code that I had. Just, just here. This is because I could recreate it, but here. It's just called oval 2. It accepts an X and Y, width and height and color. And all it does, all it does is just doing the math for me. So I specify a center, a width and a height for the, for the bubble. That makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense to specify two corners of an oval. Those corners are not going to be even on the line of the oval. And none of the corners has anything to, anything to do with the center of the oval. What a madman. What a madman designed it. I, I think that he designed it, uh, Zep designed it, because now we can have circles that are an even number of pixels. But it's still, it's bad, and I want to use this instead. That's my that's my rant. That was my rant. <laughs> okay, let's, let's just draw an oval around the... the the, the cow, and we're going to see what's, what's up. So we're going to go oval, px, py. And now a very nice is that we can just specify width and height of the bubble, and we're going to have that. Uh, I think I figured out that 7 and 7. Uh, for now, it's gonna, not going to be a... We're going to animate in a second, but for now, it's going to be 7, 7. And the color is also going to be 7, so that's going to be a white bubble. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? I think the way I set it up, I'm not exactly sure. I think the way I set it up is that width and height in oval 2, width and height is not the width of the entire bubble, not the entire oval. It's just a radius, so to speak. A radius in, in one direction, a radius in the other direction. So it's 7 and 7. And so now we want to make this a little bit wobbly. And the way we make this wobbly is we add a sign to it and a cosine. I mean, we could add other things to it, but I think a sine and cosine makes it properly wobbly. So it's going to be sine for one and cosine for the other one. Uh, let's, let's do it time. And it, just let's see how this looks. The cosine of time and uh, the sine of time. Oh, see, it's bubbling. It's bubbling a little bit. Uh, it's just bubbling a little bit slow. So I want to make it bubble a little bit faster. So multiply it by four. I think uh, four was the speed I had. So it's bubbling really fast. A uh, huh? Isn't that something, huh? Nice bubbling. Very nice bubbling uh, bubble. Now, the thing is, the bubbling is not just the actual bubble. 
it's just not just the actual bubble. The bubbling is actually also something else. That is the motion of the pickup. That's something that's also a little bit weird. So right now the pickup's just moving straight robotically downwards. That's not how bubbles move. Bubbles are kind of like wobbling a little bit, right? They're not just like the actual bubble, the surface is wobbling, but the movement of the bubble is supposed to be a little bit floaty, a little bit bubbly. And that's not what we're having right now. So I want to also change the movement of the pickup so they're a little bit more wobbly. Hear me out. So we're gonna do something like p dot sx equals, let's do an, another sign in here, right? Uh, let's do another sign in here, something like this. We're gonna see how that works. See, ooh, a lot better, right? Looks a lot more wobblier, looks a lot more bubblier. A little bit too extreme maybe, divide, let's divide by two. Yes, yes. And then maybe here we divide it by four. Mm, no, that was not good. Let's try two. Yeah, I want to have a little bit more of a... And then we're gonna do the same thing with SY. This time we're gonna use cosine. Now you see, the problem is now the, the bubble doesn't want to go down, so let's do a one plus. So it's always moving at a certain speed, but then it's kind of like wobbly motion. Okay, okay. I think this needs to be a little bit faster, so let's try this. Yes. Still a little bit too floaty. Now I want to try something. I want to actually spawn the pickups when I kill enemies. So let's do that, um, because there's something that I want to address that I noticed later when I was playtesting. Uh, I noticed previously when I was playtesting. Uh, and that is gonna be here. So here's where the enemy dies, right? So let's just, just spawn the pickup where the enemy was, e.x, e.y. So now we, see now, now all of this cows that come out, you see how the, all of the cows that come out, how they're all in sync, they're moving all together. That's not good, right? So what I want to do is maybe I want each cow to be moving a little bit individually. Here is, here is a formula that I had. So I divide this plus um, by four, and then I add p dot age. So I'm adding the age of the particle. So each particle will have a slightly different animation and divide it by 60, because that age is moving very rapidly. It's go going integers up, and there's a sine and cosine. So one, one is 360 degrees, so we have to slow it way down. And then here we do the same thing. Wait, I need to need to look. And then we divide all of this by four. This is a little bit of a chaotic thing. And then like by two, right. And then here the same thing. Uh, this thing, we're gonna go time uh, divided by four plus p dot h divided age, not page, age. Uh, divided by 60, and then we divide that by uh, by 2. Like this. It's a little bit of a formula. I could probably uh, boil it down a little bit. There's just a lot of divisions that can be probably simplified. But let's try it for now. There we go. Now there's one last thing I need to add. There's one last thing to add. Here we are setting the speed to that value. Uh, that's not something that we want to have. What we want to have is maybe uh, um, the, the uh, bubbles flying across the screen, right? So they should have some kind of, they should ease into that motion. They shouldn't be set to that motion. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna set it to a local, we're gonna save that into a local variable, dsx. Yes, why? And then we're gonna ease into that motion, right? And we're gonna change it slowly into that. So we're gonna do uh, something like p dot sx equals uh, psx minus p dot sx divided by ten. Psy, psy divided by ten. So this will calculate the bubble motion, but it won't set uh, the speed and S speed and Y speed to that 
bubble motion immediately, it will instead do like this easing thing into that motion. So whatever speed we have initially, we can make them go out, explode out of an explosion, and then slowly settle into that bubble motion. And that will also change a little bit the bubble motion, so that's why that completely didn't work. <laughs> oh yeah, because we need to go uh, plus equal. Yes! You see now they're, they're, because previously they were stopping a little bit, but now it's a little bit muted, so it's a way better bubble motion, I think. You can tweak around to those numbers, but for now I'm happy with what I'm seeing. Oh, there's something I noticed. Let me get hit. I want to get hit while while a particle's on the screen. Oh yeah, the animation continues. The bubble animation continues. Just the animation continues while I get hit. It doesn't get frozen in space in time uh, because that is something that is called in a draw function. But I think I'm fine with that. Yeah, very bubbly, very nice and bubbly. Let me simplify this a little bit. So I take this and divide it by two. So we could also divide it by eight and divide it by 120 here, right? And then leave out the two. That saves us a little bit. Right? It will just look the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally the same. Good. All right, so we now have uh, pickups. We have pickups flying out of um, out of enemies. There's two problems that we have. We cannot pick up the pickups. That's something we have to uh, solve. And there's another problem that we need to solve, uh, and that is, you see how the pickups are just like the are just limply flying out of the enemies. They just like appear and just like bleh, just spill onto the screen, right? What I want to do is I want to make them pop out of the explosions. So that's like two major steps that I need to add, but that is something that we need to add in the next episode. For now, I want to move on to the part at the end of each episode where I say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all the people who are supporting this show, this very show on coffee.com slash lazydevs. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, I will read out some a little bit dated comments here. This one is from a rogue craze for 341. And they ask on the RGB30 review, why shouldn't I buy one with the pre-installed games? And they weren't the per only person asking that. A lot of people were asking like, well, what's the problem? Why shouldn't I just buy the one with the pre-installed games? Just to explain, uh, quite often when you buy these kind of like Chinese handhelds, you get like the, the regular version, the clean version the empty version and you can for a couple of bucks you can uh, make them add an SD card full with ROMs there's two reasons why uh, there's multiple reasons but I think two major reasons why I don't like that I would I recommend against doing that one reason is that that SD card is full of junk ROMs it's quite often my experience was that I never actually found those ROMs any useful at all quite often they were full of ROMs with like games that have Chinese translations or games that had like weird hacks installed to them to give them infinite lives and stuff like that they were badly organized uh, badly bad names on the description of the games uh, just weird selection of games you just didn't have any controls of what kind of games you're gonna get you get some like some weird I don't know Doraemon games Games that nobody is actually that interested here in the West so it's just weird collection of games that you have very little control over and most of that will be just trash and also the SD card will also be trash it's not gonna be a great SD card so it will probably die on you and if you're gonna invest time in playing those games you probably want to have a good SD card in the first place right so if you're gonna buy a good SD card then you might just as well pick the ROMs that you like so you don't have to like scroll through ages of bad ROMs until you get to the ROMs that you're really interested in and ROMs that you can also trust in that they haven't been meddled with or, it, or ROMs that you deliberately meddled with in the way that you want them to be meddled with. Uh, the other reasons why I don't like that is uh, because it's piracy. I'm generally not that bad on piracy. I think there's many good reasons for why piracy exists. Uh, but in this case, when people are actually taking money 
for selling ROMs. That is iffy to me. I don't think that's cool. I think it's cool if you're doing it yourself for your personal gain, right? But doing it for money is not cool, I think. That's my ethical stance. I will not elaborate on that any further. <laughs> All right, guys, so pickups done. Next time around, we're gonna wrap up the pickups and then we're gonna move on to the bombs. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.